Hey guys, welcome to 3 Mississippi. Sid here. Thanks for clicking on the video. Today we are going to be showing you something we got in the mail for Frankie's horse and we're going to show you how we make some goat milk ice cream and we're going to be doing a couple other chores and things around here that we're going to show you. So around, let's get to it. So guys, if you've been watching Sippin' and Spillin', you know that we have uh, been talking about getting this package from Marie from our Oki Homestead. Uh, they used to have a lot of horses and not really doing that as much anymore. And so she's got all this horse tack that she's offered to gift to Frankie. She and I have been communicating and she was asking, you know, what types of stuff we had or what colors Frankie liked for certain things. Anyway, she, she just sent in the mail this amazing package of um, a whole bunch of goodies for, for Beulah, for the horse. We got, a, we got mail from Miss Marie. So I know it's got horse goodies in it and we're gonna open it up. Thank you. Uh, only if I can open this knife, it's not mine. It is a party. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. You're going to have to say what these things are. I'm assuming that's some kind of brush that you yeah, squeegee is, them with. I'm also assuming that because I don't 100% know. I'm assuming, I think that's what you squeegee them with. This looks like a squeegee. Yeah. So for I've seen sweat that before. and... Like maybe after you wash them or whatever. After you wash them. This could be a sponge. That's a brush. That's a soft brush. Uh, actually, they're both kind of hard brushes. Oh, nice. Oh, that's the important stuff there. Yeah. Woohoo, look at that. Got a nice clean bit on there. That's beautiful. This is actually the kind of bit um, that I was looking for. That's awesome. With the head stall, bridle, whatever you want to call it. Got some spore boots. These are in pink. Nice. That'll look good on Beulah with her coloring, too. Yeah. We got some more sport boots. Wow. Now what are those, what are, what are sports boots for? Like uh, just to help with impact on their, like so they don't get shin splints or something? I don't know. Uh, sure. Impact gel is an unsurpassed, all natural, energy absorbing gel. Its unique properties absorb more shock than anything on the market, yeah. providing maximum okay. equine protection. So it's, it's, what it is, is it shock absorbers for your four wheel drive horsepower vehicle. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. You got Equestrian Essentials DVD Collection. Nice. Training for, oh, lead changes, subtle age, and behavior solutions. Oh, nice. Okay. That's going to come in handy. Basic training for horses, English and Western. Nice. Caring for your horse. Is there a glue recipe in there too? or Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. A very recent book. Nice. Stable keeping. Woo! Western training. And problem solving. That, yeah, look at you. I you got, got some reading I to do, a girl. And some watching. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's gonna yeah. help a lot. I'm gonna, I just ordered some new books, but I'm gonna have to read these ones first. Yep. Thank you, Miss Marie, from our Oki Homestead. Our Oki Homestead, so much. This is amazing. I mean, I've got reading, watching and brushing to do so thank you a lot for all this this is so helpful and yeah thank you i don't even know what to say i'm, I'm speechless right now so while we're still working on getting some of that fencing in fact we ran to scrugs we're at scrugs I getting supplies that. for the fencing for the horse for the horse that fence is done yeah we're not gonna need any more so i don't mm -hmm. want to have i don't want to have extra 600 feet sitting around That's we're not gonna use any barbed wire on that back 
Oh, you know what though? Silver one. We put cows over there. We'll need more more. We're gonna put cows over there. Brian's cow. Oh, you weren't in on that conversation. No, that's news to me. Got that barbed wire and we're going to be able to get some of that strong in the next week or so hopefully and fix some of the fence that is not happy and needs to be fixed so that uh, Beulah can't escape into the creek or out onto the county road because that would be bad. So I'm uh, changing out my license plate here because I had to go re-register the vehicles that time of year and since we officially have now own Truby here, my beautiful truck. Um, I have to uh, change these out and put the new put the new plates on with the new tags. Now that we are the owners, and get that squared away. So that's what I'm doing right now while I'm talking to you fine folks. Out with the old and in with the new. Got to put Mike's new tag and his registration on his car too. Got to do all the things. See if I can get this off of here successfully. Look at that. That actually came off in one piece. I have never had that happen before. Anyway, my dad had always taught me to not, um, you know, because you, I guess the stickers are very different than they are in California. And the California stickers, you, uh, you can't get them off. They're, they're different material than this. And so you kind of just have to pile them on your license plate. But there was a thing going around for a while where people were prying them off and taking the, the, uh, the lot of the whatever the stickers were piled up and then getting it on their thing and stealing your tags basically you would take like your your knife or a razor blade and cross hatch it so that if they got it they'd get like one piece they couldn't get the whole thing and they'd give up um so anyway i always think about my dad when i do these new registration for both vehicles we are set we are golden we are good to go on to the next thing guys this little one got injured it's one of the ones in the nest over here. And the mom was going crazy um, because it was kind of flopping on the ground. Bunko kind of grabbed it and I took it away. And I can hear, I don't know if you guys can see, I can hear the mom going crazy. But you can see it's still got a little bit of fuzz. This was probably like one of the first days out of the nest or trying to get out of the nest and it kind of didn't do so well so I'm trying to get it to go back let's see if I'm tall enough to get it back in the nest get in there come on there okay I just put it back in the nest it's a little stunned let's see if the mama comes back I saw it open its mouth and it still has that like baby bird open mouth, but the mom's just going crazy. So I'm going to move away. If you are lucky enough to have a doe in milk, then you are missing a golden opportunity to be making things like cheeses and ice cream. And today we're going to make that ice cream. It's super simple, super easy. And if you're lucky, you can do it with nothing that has been bought from a store. I'll show you what I mean. So the two things that you do need to buy from the store, for sure, is gonna be uh, an ice cream maker. This will make up to two quarts at a time. Uh, and I have done before where I've made two batches back, back to back. Um, it has an inner drum that right now is still sitting in the freezer that you just wanna get frozen uh, the day before and then you're gonna be ready to pull it out and use it after you let the ingredients chill together for a while. So besides the ice cream maker, you're also gonna want a container to store your ice cream in. You don't wanna use a regular like, you know, Rubbermaid or Tupperware style uh, container that's good for the refrigerator. It may crack, uh, it may not hold the ice cream well, it might split, the lid will be uneven. This is specifically made to be frozen. The other nice feature that I like about this is that it's got these rubber grips on the bottom. So you're not chasing the ice cream around when you're trying to dig it out. It comes in handy. So both this and the ice cream maker are linked down below in our Amazon storefront. So if you have a hankering to make some ice cream after watching this, we'll get you these items first. This recipe is super simple, guys, and you can dress it up or dress it down how you like, but you're gonna start with one quart of goat's milk. That's four cups. You're gonna need some 
honey, which we've gotten this from our local honey maker, uh, Mr. Bart there at Chickasaw Honey. And then you're gonna want some vanilla extract. Now, this is my coveted, this is the last little bit I have of the two bottles that I had uh, from when I was still in California. This is a, a friend of a friend's uh, homemade batch, and it is the most amazing vanilla I have ever had in my life. And I use it very sparingly, but you're gonna need some vanilla. And you're gonna need four egg yolks. So I literally just walked out there and got another egg because currently I only have three girls laying because all my babies are young, uh, but soon, soon they will be laying. If you don't like the idea of consuming raw eggs, first of all, get over it. And second of all, the other option is to use like cream that you saved up from your uh, milking, which is a lot harder to do with goats. If you've got access to dairy cream, that works too. You're basically adding like a fat to it. The other option is like the thickening packets that come in, um, you know, in a packet, the thickening stuff, the powder. I, I rather use something all natural and uh, half the ingredients came off of my farm and the other half came off of somebody else's farm or home. So I like that. That's the way it should be. So it's really just the four ingredients. That's it. And of course you can add whatever mix ins you like, chocolate chips, or I've swirled in preserves before, anything like that is fine. But let's get to it. I'm gonna start with my vanilla extract. Now this bowl with all of the ingredients mixed together is gonna to go in the fridge so it can all kind of gel and chill and combine together. So with my vanilla extract, I'm gonna go with two teaspoons and I do them like nice and full and big because and then you need one cup of your honey. I say that's pretty, pretty, pretty close to a cup there. I'm gonna go ahead and scrape this out and add it in. Now I'm gonna separate my yolks from my egg whites. So I'm gonna get this honey and these eggs and vanilla kind of mixed up together a little bit. And then I'm gonna add my four cups or one quart of goat's milk to it and stick it in the fridge and let it chill out for a little while all together. Yeah, ice cream. I did say ice cream. I'm making ice cream. Fruit. I know you do. So I got my nice cold and restrained since it's fresh uh, goat's milk. I'm going to add that in here. Doesn't get any fresher than right out your back door now does it? Get this all combined together, and then I'm going to stick this in the fridge until the whole thing is nice and nice and cold. It's been about 30 minutes I've had that chilling in the fridge. So I just got this out of the freezer. This fits just loosely in here, and then this lid goes on the top, and this just kind of sits in it like this. And I'm just going to pour my mixture in through the top and get it going. I'm gonna let this mix for about 25 minutes, guys. And when it's close to done, I think I might add some chocolate chips to it. About five minutes before it's done is when you wanna add whatever mix-ins you're gonna add so that it's not just like sitting at the bottom and soupy. Guys, it's been going for about 20 minutes now and it's about time to add my uh, chocolate chips to it. So I'm going to show you what it looks like right now. It's starting to really look like ice cream. And they're getting all mixed in. It's so good. It just tastes like the creamiest, the best ice cream you've ever had in your life. And I know some people are kind of freaked out about goat's milk. They think it's going to taste um, goaty. Like, you know, you get goat cheese at the store sometimes has that real musky taste to it. I can tell you that I've never had that with making ice cream or with making uh, the cheese. Um, some of that has to do with the particular goat that you're milking. Some of it has to do if they are a round uh, a buck. Some goats are goatier than others too. And with the cheese, it kind of depends on how you process it a little bit as well. But with the ice cream, there's people that just drink goat's milk. There's people that just eat this ice cream. I mean, it's, there's no, there's no that flavor to it. It just tastes like thick, rich cream. So it's been about 
probably seven or eight more minutes. I let it go a little bit longer just to thicken it up. And it's looking real good. Now I would say when you first finish it, it's kind of more the consistency of like, um, like a thick, soft serve, I guess. But there we go. I got it nice in the container here, and it's ready to go sit in the freezer for us to enjoy later tonight. We're going to have Frankie try it. She just got home from school. Oh, that's better than it was in California. <laughs> no, like, seriously, your skills have improved. I, I made exactly the same recipe. Really? Yeah. Same goat, even. It tastes, like, better. I don't, I don't know. It just tastes better. Okay. Different honey. Different person's honey. Oh, you put honey in it. There was always honey that's in it. That's what I'm tasting. There was always honey in it. Well, this honey's good. I'll tell Bart you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it down below, but it's pretty easy. Just those four ingredients. So enjoy, guys. Just making a couple batches of relish here. I actually made one big batch of relish and then I divided it in half and added hot peppers to half of it and left half of it without hot peppers. It's the Sid batch and the non-Sid batch. Well, the ones that the one that's spicy shouldn't be that spicy. Uh, we'll see. We'll try it here in a minute. But there's the two batches right there side by side. The spicy one looks better. Yeah, it's got a little pop to it, a little color. I already jarred, uh, what do we got, six jars of the half pints of the non-spicy, okay? And uh, I'm trying to do 12 jars. And this is an amalgamation of a few different recipes that you liked? It is. Uh, some, some different people have emailed me some recipes. Different things about them look good. Uh, I, I ate some, some relish that I liked, and, uh, and then I tried some relishes that I bought at the farmer's market that people down here are making, trying to keep in mind that I want I want that to be a, a flavor that's kind of similar to down here. I don't even know what to call it. I'm calling it hot dog relish. But it is similar to what they call chow chow down here, uh, but also similar to what I would call a traditional relish, kind of if the two had a baby. Uh, it has zucchini, uh, yellow zucchini in it, pretty much equal parts zucchini and cucumber. And then I added, um, onions, apple, garlic, and then did a brine that is, mm, it's, it's not a bread and butter, but it's definitely not a dill. So it's, it's a brine that I found that's specifically for a hot dog relish. So, and it's pretty much just vinegar, sugar, mustard seed, celery seed, you know, pretty straightforward. I divided the two, oh, okay, so mm, important step. I put all of the ingredients in a tub, added, a quarter cup of salt per five pounds of total stuff in the tub. Mixed it all up, put it in the fridge overnight, then brought it back and ran it through a strainer, got all the liquid out, squeezed it, all the liquid out, and that was when I then started cooking it with the vinegar, vinegar and everything. So that's supposed to really improve the flavor, remove some of the, uh, you know, some of the natural liquids from the product itself before it gets cooked down and otherwise it would just be like super soupy right so that's where we're at move some of the canned items over here into the living room because it stays obviously really nice and cool in here and we have all these shelves I've just put knickknacks and things so as we're canning more of our own stuff I'm just gonna be removing knickknacks but we've got right now show you guys some of the stuff we got we've got this is a bunch of chicken stock that we made um this is canned chicken like i used to make chicken salad and stuff like that that is tomato juice amazing for cooking your rice and things with it mike's hot sauce there's some pasta sauce there there's some canned tomatoes here this is some hot spicy cayenne pepper and garlic mixture and i don't even remember what other peppers he had in there but hot spicy powder for for mama here more tomato juice i couldn't fit it all up but there on the top a little bit more of the stock i do have to reorganize this a bit once i move some more things but and then down here we have the whole canned tomatoes and then 
that is um, was too big to put all at once into one of these little jars. Um, this is cayenne powder that Mike makes and it's amazing. So he actually uh, did that, those powders and that powder in our new dehydrator here. And right now it's got uh, basically squash chips is what we're making. He, uh, we cut up a uh, patty pan and we made a bunch of little pieces out of it and he's got it in the dehydrator here, basically making, trying to make chips to see if that works. It's sort of an experiment with this one patty pan that we had left, but so far so good. And then of course there's our Fort Flock sign. We haven't hung it yet because that side of the coop's not done yet, but for now I get to enjoy it in the living room. Mm -hmm. 